Welcome back to the podcast. Again, I told you this is uh, the second episode that we did at the Tom Ferry Summit. This week, we have a chance to catch up with Clayton Collins, the CEO of HW Media, that's the parent company of Housing Wire. And he's gonna talk about several things that I, I think you're gonna find really important. First, how to create a model when you can zig when others are zagging. Second, the importance by far of having great partners in our business. And third, his outlook, his longer term outlook on our business. So let's jump right in. Well, Clayton, it's exciting to have you on the podcast. If I can get that out, you know. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. I, uh, I've been a guest on a few podcasts, but it's always a, a little uncomfortable being the, the one in the hot seat versus What's the one who gets to stage the questions. What's uncomfortable Honestly, about it? I think it's a lot. I think it's easier to host than it is to be the guest. I hear that. Um, because there's a, there's a set. I don't, I don't come into a podcast with like staged questions. I like, right. I, there's like three topics I want to hit. And as a host for like, my housing news podcast yeah. that's really easy for me to do because most of the guests are like All right, i know what they're known for i know what their companies are doing i know this trend that's happening in the industry so like those are the three things i'm going to hit in this 30 or 45 minute conversation yeah yeah but as a guest i don't i don't, I don't know where you're going to take me dave i don't know where we're going to go but, <laughs> well uh, well let's do this i'm going to put you at ease okay, okay we're going to have a it. conversation and here's what here's what i want people listening to understand who clayton is what housing wire is doing and ultimately where we as keeping current matters are passionate about be the expert in the market you are as well and and everything you're doing at housing wire so just to shine some light on that because when i think about the purpose of our podcast how's the market to be the expert you have to understand that and yep. you're one of the best and housing wire is the best at doing that so Appreciate i'm it. excited to have you on today so let's talk about let's kind of back up i'm gonna give you you and i know each other so well but i'm, I'm super excited to talk about your passion for the housing business and here's where i want you to start i want to tee you up on this all right just you grew up your dad was an originator so you can yep. tell a little bit of that story and how you grew up but you took kind of a non-traditional path into our business but isn't that actually traditional? Like, how yeah. many traditional paths are there into well, the real estate? Well, I, I think it's... the traditional <laughs> path is I started doing this, and now twenty years later, I still do this, and I guess this is what I do. Yeah, you know. But but talk about how growing up in the business, and then how you you became, uh, you know, CEO of Housing Wire. Yeah, so um, my, my dad's an originator, grew up seeing him work at a, a community bank, leave and start a brokerage, um, go back to a community bank, the yeah. whole great financial crisis debacle that, that was for so many loan originators, go back to a broker, and, and now he works for uh, he works with a large brokerage shop. And uh, so I've seen that kind of the evolution and what different market dynamics have put different models like in favor or out of favor and the challenges that come right. in different rate environments, different inventory environments, different regulatory environments. But absorbing all of that growing up was never with the intent like one day <laughs> I am going to get into housing right. media and if help anything, inform did the you industry. Think, that might not be something I want to do. You know, I was, um, so I grew up in a small town in Florida. Uh, well, it's a great place to live if you're a retiree, but not exactly a place that many young people aspire to stay. Yeah. And uh, so I went to college and, and jetted off to, to New York and started a career in financial services. Yeah. And like, I thought like banking on Wall Street was was the, the path. And, uh, yeah. and I was um, in New York for about seven combined years at two financial institutions doing commercial banking and then m a advisory uh, specifically for media companies and uh got some great experience learned yeah. how to learn how to do deals learned how to finance deals and some of the strategy work that comes into m a as well as operating businesses um but after a few years on the advisory side decided that i was ready to you know scratch that entrepreneurial itch and go out and do something on my own and how long ago was that that was uh, that itch was really in like 2013. I left okay. in I left in 2014 and raised a fund called Riamar Capital, which uh, ultimately has been my investment vehicle in building HW Media and Housing Wire. Yeah. So so 2013, you build a fund and you go look for investments that you can make. I exactly. Right? And so like the listeners might be trying to tie together the story it's behind, fascinating the, behind to the, me. the mortgage background. And, and, and let me say stage, something else, and I really want you to talk about this. Right. You brushed over, I grew up in a small town in Florida, and there's a lot more to the story than that, that I know, because you yeah. shared it with me passionately. Yeah, so, um, 
small town of Florida. My dad's an originator, but like we go back a couple generations. Like my great grandfather was a, a, a developer and helped like develop the town that we grew up in, and um, and that creates deep roots in the town. Uh, but it also like in a small town, like I didn't know anybody who worked for a Fortune 500 organization. Nobody's like, oh, my dad yeah. works at <laughs> Dell. Like it's like everybody's a if like you're doing well financially for the most part, you're like a real estate agent or an insurance agent or a home builder or in healthcare or like there's not it's not like big corporate jobs and so right. i grew up in an environment where one was like very real estate centric and and two was very entrepreneurial by by nature like right. thinking about a career in a big bank like um, was attractive to me because it was something that I'd never seen before um, and like people that were close to me right. but uh, you know you, you get in that environment and you start to look at your roots and like realize that um, there's a there's something there's something that brews inside of you and you grow up in a scrappier entrepreneurial environment and um, you know, that really started you know coming out after uh, six or seven years and in, right. in big bank land yeah yeah so grew up in this town deep family roots you start Rio Mar, is that how you say yeah, it? Rio Capital. Mm -hmm. That's connected to the area, right? It is, yeah. So I was actually talking to someone about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so I've mentioned my great grandfather. He developed this area of swampland in Florida um, for a group of doctors in Ohio. He was a mm -hmm. injured war vet, and like he was seeing a doctor. He's like, "Hey, we just bought this land in Florida. We need someone to like, turn it into something." And like, you know, as a you know kind of a hired gun, he went down and like started developing this land became a ultimately became mayor of our our hometown and state house of reps and brought mosquito control to the area and a lot of the infrastructure that like you know enabled the town to be what it is today um put in a lot of the regulation that kept it a small town like he put in a uh a four floor moratorium so there's never going to be like a big condos like in south florida and um a lot of things like that you still see the fingerprints on the, the town that's today. awesome that's yeah. great i mean it's just such a great story of kind of you know family and then your dad's in the mortgage business yep. you see that so let's go back to 2013 you put together a fund which we probably don't even have time i don't even know what that yeah. means about you put together a fund and then what attracted you when you started looking and ultimately, I think it's correct to say, acquired Housing Wire at that time, yeah. right? Yeah, so, uh, and I just realized I left a part of that, like, great grandfather story out. The area that he developed is now known as Riamar, which is the yeah. which is the naming pull through to, to Riamar Capital, the fund that I created. So, um, started Riamar in 2014, was out hunting for acquisitions, found myself con consistently attracted to things around uh, real estate, home services, financial services, think the areas that I knew and like knew enough to be dangerous going into conversations with, with founders and owners. And right. um, in late 2015, I met the founders of Housing Wire. And um, in 2016, we got a, an acquisition closed. And April 25th, 2016, my wife and I moved um, off the East Coast for the first time in our life, moved here to Dallas, Texas, and um, have been here running and building housing wire for the last seven years that's awesome that's yeah. such a great story and i appreciate you sharing it i know i was yeah, kind of no. guiding it because i've heard it we've had dinner yeah. we've talked about it and um just where your roots come from in this business i, th I think it's important for people to hear and it's but i mean it's very like the roots you know give you like enough knowledge to know the right questions to ask mm. but like um in the seat i'm in now it's a whole different perspective when you start thinking about learning about getting to know the housing market on a on a national level mm. and understanding how important it is to our national and global economy um which isn't a perspective or a hat you wear when you're like you're thinking at the local level yeah and um and also how differently different markets across the the u.s behave and the importance of not only national level intelligence about what's happening in um, the financial side of interest rates and, and regulation and technology and innovation, but what's happening at a local level right. with real estate um, uh, listings and prices and pendings and all the stuff that I think you and I have gotten ultra yeah. passionate about in the in the last several years. Yeah, I mean, no, no doubt. You know, we have published at KCM years it, well, because the the number changes each year of the dollar impact that a new home sale or an existing home sale has in a local community. It's it's unbelievable, it, you know, um, in drivers through. of the economy. Yeah. yeah, and the interconnected nature of housing is something that I still don't know if that that narrative is fully digested by right. by like the average homeowner or the right. average business person. Um, I was just speaking with a mortgage lender recently, talking about their 
one of their new revenue lines as they get into the affiliate side of the the um, economic flow after a home is purchased and before a home is sold with um, home security right. and deals with home home services businesses and um, some of the values of that so that that pulls additional transaction value to the mortgage lender who has a pretty strong touch point with the the customer relationship and right. um, but also the benefit of being able to give your borrower or your home buyer in the case of a real estate agent uh, added value after the transaction that increases the probability of um, retention and pull through on future transactions, right. which has been a which has been a real pain point in mortgage and real estate for a very long time. Right, and I, and I think that the goal of any lender, any real estate company, certainly is to acquire as many of those settlement services as possible yep. for continuity and delivery. So let's let's talk about that aspect of the business because education certainly is a piece of that yeah. something that i know you and, and your team uh, at housing wire are passionate about something that we're passionate about at keeping current matters we quote housing wire and yeah. you, you know whether it be an article something logan said something mike's done um and uh and, and try to be you know reflective of hey here's something agent you need to be listening to, or this is something we need to make sure we get yep. in the hands of consumers. So for the last seven years, you, you've acquired um, housing wire, you made a couple other acquisitions. Yeah. Talk about those, but talk about really how you see that helping housing professionals ultimately be the expert. So. You know, there's parts of the housing wire story that have stayed incredibly consistent since the business was initially founded in 2008 to, and then parts that have, that have evolved. But one thing that has remained incredibly consistent is the focus on serving the entire housing economy from real estate to loan origination to loan servicing, capital markets, and then everything that happens in between that from title and valuation mm -hmm. and tech. And uh, we believe, and the, the, the business, the brand has always believed in an interconnected housing ecosystem. And I believe that one of the, the challenges that's plagued the housing market in a lot of other industries is siloed information and different, right. different um, and differentiated data and perspectives from different job categories in the industry. So if we rewind to before the GFC, the, the great financial crisis. <laughs> we, have a, we have an ecosystem where there's real estate agents who are focused on one thing, have no idea what's coming up the pipe in terms of loan product or what's happening in interest rates or product innovation, innovation or underwriting guidelines. And we have loan originators who don't really, like you're not entirely paying attention to what's happening in the real estate side and don't even know what loan servicing is. And mm -hmm. servicers who don't know what the real estate agents are telling the home buyers are ultimately gonna be the, the, the loans and the homeowners that are serviced for the next 30 years. Just a really disjointed, ecosystem that was incredibly interconnected and needed to be interconnected, but weren't talking to each other and had yeah. siloed information. So yeah. Housing Wire was founded with the vision of helping connect the housing economy and providing information across the industry that the most informed housing professionals would grasp onto and realize the importance of understanding that, hey, my role, my title might be loan originator, but right. I also need to have some grasp of what's happening in capital markets because that impacts pricing and product. And have some grasp of what happens in loan servicing because that impacts my home buyer and the experience they'll have after we hand them the keys. Right. And the same goes for, for real estate agents. Yeah, I think it's, it's such an interesting point that you bring up because our business, I don't think it was created originally for people to have that mindset. There wasn't an incentive, right? If I'm an agent, I got to know my area. If I'm a loan officer, I got to know my area. If I'm a title rep, I got to know my area. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not really outside of the desire I might have to be the expert might not go, well, whatever happens over here is, is over here. So what are ways right now that people listening, they're like, hey, I've kind of I've heard housing wire, maybe I've seen yeah. Logan on CNBC or something like that. What are things that you're intentionally doing to make that vision a reality? Yeah, so we've made a few very intentional steps. So what we can do organically is hire more reporters and journalists to, to cover these beats, get mm -hmm. deeper into real estate, deeper into title and valuation, deeper into mortgage origination. So we're covering more of the information that these target job categories want to know, need to know. But we mm -hmm. publish uh, all through Housing Wire. So we're bringing, we're publishing like 
job specific content but publishing it through the same platforms with mm -hmm. with the ambition and site design that we can circulate audience into other knowledge why they when they, they might come to us for an article about um i don't know marketing strategy for a real estate agent but they might stay for the mortgage rates analysis and then read about inventory trends and then and maybe read an article about how capital market spreads are impacting mortgage rates that ultimately impact the home buyer right. and affordability. Right. So like we're trying to circulate audience through content that we know is helpful for them as professionals. And so organically, we're able to invest in hiring more writers and content creators and journalists to, to create that content. And then on the inorganic side, which is you know my word for M&A or acquisitions, okay. um, we focus on how do we acquire audiences and capabilities that make us even stronger and better in that regard. So yeah, yeah. In, in 2020, we acquired Real Trends from founder Steve Murray. Mm -hmm. Real Trends has been publishing and analyzing and researching the real estate brokerage agent and team market for 35 years, hosted an incredible event called the Gathering of Eagles, but is best known for its agent broker and team rankings. Right. And right. Um, and from a, a media operator, information services operator perspective, a great database of some of the top performing agents and brokers in the country. And yeah. so Acquiring Real Trends did two things for us. It stepped us into a capability on agent and broker rankings mm -hmm. and the data that comes with that. And it also helped us acquire a database and some credibility with a mm -hmm. real estate audience that might not have known Housing Wire previously. Yeah. Um, so we've owned this business about two years, have done some pretty meaningful integrations with Housing Wire, but that will get deeper and deeper as, as the years go by. And in 2024, we are taking a step to bring our two house, HW Media's two events, Housing Wire Annual and Gathering of Eagles, and mm -hmm. under one roof. So oh, cool. in 2024, that will be a, okay. a single event with tracked content. So the brokers and agents know that they can go, they can get their content specific to them, the same for the mortgage side, but being able to bring people together for shared keynotes and economic talks and cocktail receptions and golf and whatever else helps them learn and build community. So right. we know there's a need for for niche and specific content, but there's also a need to learn about what's happening across the ecosystem. So right. like 2024, our Housing Wire event will be that that first year of bridging people together, in, it together. in an in-person environment, right. which we've been making steps toward a digital environment. Yeah. Um, another thesis, which only applies to a small percent of housing professionals, is our belief that reverse mortgages will be a very important part of how mm. retirements are funded over the next two decades. We, mm. We're looking at a, um, and I'll, step to what we did to address this in a second, but we're looking at an environment where um, the average baby boomer approaching re retirement is um, severely underfunded from a yeah. uh, 401k, IRA, and pension perspective, but they're sitting on significant housing wealth that's only accelerated and appreciated over the last three years as we've seen massive home price appreciation in, in most markets. That's so a huge point, a it's, huge point. Like there's. Um, yeah. And couple that with the trend of the desire to age in place and stay in your home longer. Like mm -hmm. there are folks that are approaching retirement age where a significant amount of their net worth is sitting in their home and reverse mm -hmm. mortgages or some type of home equity conversion mortgage product will be an important part of accessing that. Right. So we acquired reverse mortgage daily mm -hmm. to uh, help bring the reverse mortgage audience as well as the intelligence into our organization. And, you know, that's a small niche part of like the housing ecosystem. Right. We think it'll be increasingly important and was a, a bet we made on, on that segment. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then most recently in 2022, we acquired Altos Research to bring in another capability into our organization. Mm -hmm. So Altos aggregates active listings data at a, na at a national level. We hit 99.5% of all active listings in the country. And um, with that information, we work with, with partners to license that data out, but we also work directly with real estate agents to um, offer that data through a, a software as a service tool so they can send market reports, local market reports, zip level, zip yeah, yeah. code level data to their um, past home buyers and sellers yeah, and yeah. referral sources. Yeah. Um, so we, we love the capability it brought into the organization. We also love the intelligence that it brought into our organization. So now we can mine this, this data set and work with the founder, Mike Simonson, to make our newsroom and our content even more, more, um, more on point uh, yeah. they, and like being faster data than we were able to get previously and do mm -hmm. some research and editorial work that was just challenging beforehand. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, no, I, I, we, we've always at, at KCM pointed back to Housing Wire 
in the editorial piece and things that you're talking about, maybe it's a breaking news piece from Black Knight, yep. you know, and, and you do a phenomenal job of that and saying, hey, here's what's happening. We did a lot of that during um, COVID and um, the forbearance numbers, you know, Housing Wire was, was all over that with yep. Black Knight and, and information that was being published. Um, and then, you know, had done uh, you know, the same with Mike and Altos now under the same roof there. And that's um, that's really neat. And shameless plug, we're using the Altos data for KCM, you know, plugged in now. So we've got a partnership there and, uh, and we love that uh, for our local product. The best agents know what's happening nationally and also know what's going on in their local market. At Keeping Current Matters, we help real estate agents become experts. And now, we've added something that will change the way you communicate, KCM Local. With KCM Local, you'll now have access to local data, national insights, and powerful visuals, all in one place. To be the local expert, visit KeepingCurrentMatters.com. One thing I wanted to go back to, and, and I, I, I wonder, people listening, Maybe they've heard of uh, the uh, Gathering of Eagles. Yep. They've definitely heard of the Real Trends ranking, mm -hmm. right? So if you're an agent listening right now that's wondering, how do I submit my information? How do I, uh, you know, how would I do that? Can you give the quick, like, hey, here's here's how you do that? Yeah, so Real Trends rankings or Real Trends Verified is the only double verified rankings program. We recognize about the top one and a half percent of, mm -hmm. of agents and brokers and teams in the country. Uh, we open up data submission in Q1 of each year and do okay. a massive data cleanse and verification process um, in March, April and start dropping rankings in, in May, May, June. So it's a, it's a brutal process of going through tens of thousands of, of sub lines of submission data that we collect through two primary ways. So we have partnerships with most of the major brands. Mm -hmm. So we're working with directly with most of the major national brands to submit data directly from their systems into ours, which we then kick off a verification process on. We also, from independents or brands that don't submit data on behalf of their, their agents, we take data directly from them. So they can um, submit through realtrends.com, provide their data. We charge a fee for that because it is a massive uh, right, lift on right. the verification side, an expensive lift to, right. to bring quality data to, to front and center. But uh, agents and brands are both welcome to submit through Real Trends in Q1. And uh, we've, we've evolved that process a lot in the last few years. We've owned the business about two years now. Right. And um, we've really stepped forward into a cloud-based uh, digital future. And right. um, the, so the process looks very different than it did a couple of years ago. It was very Excel-based and we've, uh, <laughs> we've evolved. I, can, I believe that fully yeah. in, in what you and your team have done. And yeah. I've seen that. And I know that's something that uh, certainly the, the worthiness, the brand of that, what, how that's, you know, uh, sort of yeah. felt in the business is huge. And, uh, and who are partners on that? Partners on... Uh, like, on the Real Trends rankings. Don't you have several partners on that? Yeah, so, uh, so we're here at the Tom Ferry yeah, Success yeah, yeah. Summit. Tom has been a partner. Um, he has access to some data that we use in the verification process. And, uh, you know, has been an advisor to me and our, some of our other leaders on the rapidly changing dynamics and right. teams and team ridges. And that's honestly probably the hardest part of the, the, breaking the rankings it down. is like figuring out, all right, so who's a broker, who's a team, who's a team ridge, how does this fit? What's a small, medium, large, mega? And like it, we do a lot of categorical right. rankings, not just like national level rankings. Right. So like get figuring out um, who is what. And like there's a lot of, uh, I don't know, like different definitions of how people perceive themselves. Yeah. And there's uh, there's businesses that should be classified as a team, but it's like everything's running through one agent's um, uh, uh, ID. So like it's like, right. Right, are you a, are you a mega agent who's like doing two thousand transactions on your own, or is this actually a right. team? And like so that's a big part of the verification process right. to like figure out like, all right, we know everyone runs their business differently. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're trying to um, unify a data set and have right. a cohesive way of telling a story. All these different business models need to be defined, and Tom's been important in that, yeah. in that process. Have you found anybody doing 2,000 transactions on their own? That's a question that we have. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There are a few um, agents who uh, have very strong builder relationships, right. 
And uh, and there are there's so many different models for selling homes. It's not all like you know the the plain vanilla existing home inventory. Like there are yeah. agents and brokerages who specialize in distressed and REO and new home. And some of those models from a volume sure. perspective can look really different. Yeah. And um, there are still agents, there are still brokers, and you know that's part of the the verification analysis yeah. process to make sure that we're we're looking at things the right way. Yeah, that makes sense. I appreciate you giving just a little bit of in the in the digital sellers. I mean, there's a there's a gentleman here in Texas who continually is at the top of the rankings, and you know he sells through a pretty popular website. And it's not it's not the same as like the agents that are right out there every the day. Success right. summit, yeah. but uh, he's an agent selling a lot of homes. So no, that makes like, sense. Um, um, let's let's shift gears for just a minute because um, I know you're not sitting down on this podcast going, "Hey, I'm." the market expert, but certainly someone that has a purview into a lot of information in the market. Are there things right now that you're seeing as housing wire, that you're sort of seeing in the industry start to shift that yeah. would be important for a, you know, an agent, a loan officer listening that you have a unique perspective on from, from the seat that you sit in? Yeah, so I mean, we're obviously sitting in a tight, like a very challenging market. Inventory mm -hmm. is very low and it's reminding us of some of the concepts and, um, and like rule, I don't want to say rules of thumb, but just like rules of the market yeah. that um, you know change in different cycles, but continually they rhyme. So yeah. like we're we're in this environment where where rates are high and inventory is super low, and the thing that Logan and Mike keep talking about are that that um, sellers are buyers, and if we don't yeah. have sellers, we're not going to have buyers, and we're not going to have inventory. And the, the understanding the relationship between somebody's ability to afford that move up home or, or whatever else drives them to becoming a seller um, is, a, is the massive hurdle to us bringing inventory to market. So we're in this ecosystem where for years we all thought we all understood that new home construction would not be a, um, could not like at scale be a solution to inventory problems. And here we are in a market where new home is, is dominating, um, uh, is, is dominating sales volume because ex mm. existing is so low. So like that's a, a, a topic that we've been watching yeah. incredibly closely. And, um, and that kind of, I was thinking through over, over the last few weeks kind of what are some of the tactics that uh, agents and loan originators should deploy in this market environment. Yeah. And one of the things that I kind of keep coming back to is um, there's no great strategy that if everybody adopts it simultaneously. So I've been thinking about as an agent, agent or originator or as an executive, how do you develop a model that enables you to, to zig when others zag? Yeah, so yeah. I've been at a few real estate events in the last few weeks and the topic that I just mentioned, new home construction has, has come up several times. Yeah, and yeah. Like agents being able to shift their focus and brokerages shifting focus to building partnerships with home builders and um, bringing a lot of them into the market. If everybody zigs in that direction, um, it becomes just as competitive as what we see in the existing inventory market, right, the existing home market right now. Right. So I've been thinking a lot about developing strategies that are unique to the individuals or the organization's capability set. Right. And uh, that's um, so like being being very intentional with saying there's not one strategy that's right. It's looking internally and figuring out. What can I do that's different than what everybody else is right. doing? Right. And I think that's knowing your market, knowing your skill set yep. and strength versus like, hey, let's all go find two builders that we can work with and, you know, do that. And and I think the we had John Burns on uh, from John Burns Consulting and Research on the podcast. And certainly I think the outlook is is that builders can continue to build, but they will not be the solution no. for um, for they're inventory. not incentivized to be the solution. Regulation right. prevents them from moving significantly faster, and they've all had the scars of the great financial crisis right. and right. an incentive to build sustainable businesses, not go for a cash grab scenario. Right. So it's right. Uh, I mean, they'll you know they'll 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 work pricing, they'll work models to to win, but like they, I think all the builders have figured out that. Yeah. surviving and building sustainable models is really right. important. To well, them. you know, I, I was with a, a, a lender client that uses KCM yesterday and in their perspective from a lending, you know, they're kind of exclusive lenders for several builders do a fair builder business is that builders are winning in this market for a number of different reasons. One, they've got the inventory. Two, they figured out how to navigate yep. this market and offering incentives that work for the buyer. 
So it, th there, there are things that are positive in that and where it makes sense, but no two markets are equal in the fact that there may not be land, there may not be builder activity, there's you know uh, markets that are performing differently um, relative to builders. But here's what, and, and as we kind of wrap this up, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the conversation just in you know our relationship, but getting people that listen to um, KCM, this podcast, more familiarity with housing wire. So just just know that. I'm grateful for that. What are you, you talked about kind of a long term trend of underfunded um, retirement plans that leading to um, you know reverse mortgages, which I think makes all the sense in the world. And I think for somebody that's passionate about that area area, you should look into that, right? Yeah. And go check housing wire out, get educated, understand it, and, you know, realize what it is. What are other things that you see longer term or even in the next 12 to 24 months that folks should be thinking about? So we're in a you know year three of a period of a lot of change in housing. And um, one of the things that I'm consistently reminded of is that the change won't stop here. We might be right. in a prolonged period of interest rates being higher than anybody would desire and inventory being lower than anyone would desire. But I do not see a, precip a precipice point for fast change in Q3 or Q4 right. or, or even 2024 where we see a massive change in the interest rate environment. But one of the things that- Or units for that. Or, or unit, the, units, the yeah. Units we have, yeah, like yeah. It's not, um, it's not yeah. all about mortgage pricing. There's right. um, demographic trends and uh, geographical trends that are will continue to put pressure on inventory in certain markets. Mm -hmm. So the thing I've been thinking about that I think is incredibly important for our audience to grasp onto is the value of building and the importance of building long-term relationships with the borrowers and home buyers and sellers that you have today. Because there yeah. will be a need that arises and right. you don't want that person turning to the most convenient agent or broker at the at the time. You, you need them turning back to you. And so being an advisor, because rates will change. The, the homes that are selling today that are locking in at 7.5% or wherever, wherever they're locking today, right. um, there will be an environment where refinance is necessary or attractive. Mm -hmm. There will be an environment where somebody who feels locked into their mortgage rate, the lockdown theory that gets so much press, sure. um, doesn't feel that pressure anymore and is ready to move to the school district they want to be in or upgrade to that extra bedroom, whatever it is, or re relocate for work or family. There will yeah. be that environment. So yeah. I think it's incredibly important to think about the long-term relationships that you develop with today's client base and sphere of influence and figure out how you not only like are in the right place at the right time when they need you, but proactively providing value and information and knowledge to help yeah. your borrowers and home buyers and sellers make the right decision at the right time. Because yeah. um, there's a, it, it's the market changes just as fast as it moved in the last three years, like there will be another point of change. Might not be in Q4, it might not be in 2024, but there will be a time where this market loosens up a little bit and people are ready to move and there will be pent up demand and people are going to move fast, which is, another kind of scary factor if, it, uh, right. if they move too fast, we enter another home price appreciation period. Right, right. Which we show, by the way, that that's not what the Fed wants, right? No, that is, I don't uh, think it should be what any of us want. Right, like right. this is like we, I think the housing industry, like, it, you know, it feels good when home prices go up. As a, as a homeowner, like I like seeing my, <laughs> sure, like, my right, Zestimate right. pop up right. every, uh, And I'm sure there's some agents that are like, hey, I wish this market would slow down. Now they're like, hey, be careful what you wish for. Like it, any of us, you know, exactly. in, in the business. But we, like the industry needs to be, needs to be fluid. It has to be yeah. able to, we have to be able to transact and buy and sell homes. Mm -hmm real estate professionals and mortgage professionals profit off of transactions. We want to see transaction volume. No, we don't need to like be setting record volume every year. That's not healthy for the housing economy, but yeah. we do need to see a, a level of volume that supports the industry and gives homeowners the ability to transact and not be locked into a home. That like I've seen, I've seen a few real estate memes of uh, joking about, didn't know my starter home was my forever home, right, but like right, right. that shouldn't be the housing economy. That's not the housing economy that we want for, for our right. country. So uh, that, that takes loan professionals and real estate professionals being ready to offer advice and offer solutions when the market or the or 
the consumer demand arises. And yeah. Like ultimately, we're going to hit a point where um, where people get comfortable with the rate environment, the inventory environment, the mm -hmm. price environment, and, and make change. But we're in a we're in a funky period right now. Right. Where, um, the biggest thing stopping business activity or, or transactions is um, the you know the funny thoughts going through people's heads and the, right. the, the, the lock-in on what their rate is today or what the rate that their their uncle or parent or neighbor got right. two and a half years ago right well I think you the word you used was healthy we, we, we need a healthy market yep. and we've been out of balance and so we're coming you know back to the yep. other side pendulum swinging so to speak and um, and, and we certainly feel that in the business. But I, I want to go back to what you said. I think the, the point that you make um, in that I love uh, about what your vision is for Housing Wire is built on relationships. And I would add built on being the expert, right? Having Absolutely. access to the information that you can be the expert. And so in Keeping Current Matters, we're grateful for all the work that you do. I, I hope for folks listening, they have a sense of what that you know, that passion area where it comes from and what Housing Wire is doing, but also just the importance of knowing what's happening. And, and, and I like the way that you talk about the interconnectedness of, uh, of business. And if you're an agent listening, having a great partner that you can lock arms with, that's a lender, is critical, critical in this market. Having great partners in other areas of the business, critical so that you can deliver that service. So Deliver that service and deliver that knowledge. Yeah. Agents should be armed with mortgage information from their loan origination connections and relationships yeah. and, and vice versa. Absolutely. Well, listen, Clayton, thank you for joining. We're here at the, at the Tom event, Tom Ferry yeah, Summit. Yeah, you're getting and, ready to rock the stage this yeah, afternoon, right? Yeah, Steve will be on, okay. uh, not me, but um, uh, excited about just the chance to get to sit down with you, hear your passion. I'm grateful for you joining today. Thank you. You know, both of these episodes that we were able to do at the Tom Ferry Summit were a lot of fun face to face with some leaders in our business. You know, this podcast is part of our greater vision, uh, really at Keeping Current Matters to help families feel confident when buying and selling a home. And I hope you found value in that. If you did, please like uh, this podcast, subscribe and share it with somebody that you know could be impacted by it. And we'll see you back on next week.